Hello and welcome back to Curiosity Mine, one of the largest and most popular items in the collection of the Lightning Ridge Historical Society is a car. But it's not just any car, it's a car that was used for many, many years as an advertisement for the business of a family that is, without exaggeration, largely responsible for the existence and perseverance of the opal industry and the opal economy at Lightning Ridge. Well, everybody loves this Holden. And what I say to the men who want to buy it, and that's one out of every two, I say, yes, every Aussie bloke has an affair or had an affair in a beautiful lounge suite like this FC 59 Holden. I spoke with Barbara at the Lightning Ridge Historical Society about the car and its significance in the society's collection. This vehicle was given to us by Sherman Opals, as you can see by the sign. The longest serving Australian Opal Company, 1896, and they started out in White Cliffs. Opal was found in Lightning Ridge about 1900, and it was when our Charlie Nettleton and Jack Murray walked across to sell the first parcel of black opal that a lot of the White Cliffs miners followed them back to the ridge, to the new site in New South Wales for opal. And uh, the Shermans were one of those uh, buyers who came across. They were here in early years, they always supported the miners, good times and bad, and they continue to do that. And we're glad to have this vehicle to, to share their story. And we get to do that every time anybody asks the question, who was Sherman Opals? I also had the opportunity to speak with Peter Sherman of Sherman Opals about his family's history at Lightning Ridge and at other Australian opal fields. We're a third generation Australian mining family. Granddad started in Whitecliffs in 1896. Uh, work right through all the opal fields, Lightning Ridge, Coopedi, Andamooka. Love what he did. Um, dad took over in '53 when my dad, my granddad, passed away, unfortunately. Um, and then I took over with my brother. I took over in '69, end of '69. My brother came in '73. So it's been a three generation right the way through. My brother retired in '99. My younger brother, and I've been continuing ever since and loving it more and more and more. To drive Holden yourself is to discover why, in economy, dependability, performance, styling and comfort, you get more for your money in Holden, Australia's own car. The car itself is a 1959 FC Holden Special, which was the top of the line badge for the FC series. This car also came in a Ute version and a station wagon version, all of which came with a six cylinder engine that produced a whopping 72 horsepower or 54 kilowatts in today's money. It's rear wheel drive with a three on the tree manual transmission and it has some delightful period features like this chrome ring on the steering wheel, which is actually the horn. I asked Peter about how the car found its way to becoming a Lightning Ridge icon. For many years, well, since about 69, I started coming up here and I was buying from the Black Opal Motel because everybody bought from the Black Opal Motel. I had the, the end room, there was no um, fence around in those days, they'd just come around the corner, knock on the door, you're buying. It was fun, fun. And um, I just got sick and tired of staying in motels and Les said he was going to retire. And Les Taylor was a very, very famous Opal buyer in those days. And he used to do church services on a Sunday here with scones from his wife and lovely, lovely man, but a really shrewd buyer. And I used to buy a lot of opal off him and he stopped selling the house. So I said, I'll buy it. My brother said, no, nah, we don't want a house. We're going to use the motel. And I said, no, 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 I want to buy the house. And my brother says, no. And uh, Vet Les, look, I'm, I'm, I'll reduce the price if your brother's worried and you can buy it a bit cheaper. My brother still said no. And about three months later he rang up, he said, look, I've had five or six people who now want to buy the house, so I can't reduce the price. I said, that's all right. I've decided, override my brother, I'm going to buy it anyway. So I bought it. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, now, Les never swore. He didn't smoke or drink. He was a pugilist in the war and a great bloke, but he used the word bally, as in the shoes. Yeah, that's a bally good stone or whatever. And he said, now down in the garage down there is a 57 FC Holden. He said, I paid 50 quid for it with the house and I bally well want $100 for it. And so I gave him 
the price was, I can't remember, it was 26,000 or something for the house. Well, I can't remember the exact amount. And a hundred bucks for a 57 FC holder with the wings on the back, beautiful thing that I drove around for years with the Sherman's back sign on the side. Opal buyers are almost always from out of town, Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, overseas. So they come to town for a few days at a time and they put out a sign to say that they're looking for Opal and then they wait for the sellers, the runners, the miners, whoever has the Opal to rock up and start talking business. Some Opal buyers have a permanent place in Lightning Ridge, others stay in local motels or caravan parks. Anyway, my point here is that when a buyer is in town, they're here for business and they need to make their presence known. When Sherman's were in town, of course, we have the back in parking, Sherman's back, and they parked it just down one block in the main street from their house. And that announced that you just walked up to the corner and they were there willing to give you top dollar for your opal. Curiosity Mine is now on Patreon. Patreon is a service that allows you to directly support your favorite creators to keep making content. If you feel that Curiosity Mine deserves it and you'd like to support my work through Patreon, the link is in the description of this video. If you do, you'll get your name on this list of amazing people. Not that you're not amazing already, but you will be helping me to continue making videos about this kind of thing into the future. So that's how the Sherman's Back Holden came into existence, as an eye-catching visual in the streets of Lightning Ridge, directing anyone with Opal to go and see the Sherman's and hopefully offload it for a good price. The Sherman's Back Holden also ties into the advertising campaign that was regularly run in the Lightning Flash newspaper, the local newspaper in Lightning Ridge back in the 80s and 90s, the back page of which was almost always an advertisement titled Sherman's Back, often with a drawing of this very car and one of my favourite visual puns ever, this little cartoon of Peter and Warwick Sherman, the Shermans facing away from us. It's Sherman's Back. Don't you just love that? As a grammar obsessive, I love this pun even more due to the fact that Sherman's back with the apostrophe is grammatically correct for both the contraction Sherman is back and the possessive Sherman's back. It's, it's fantastic. I know, I'm a nerd. What do you want? Anyway, Peter shared another story about the car. The passenger's door locked, but the driver's door didn't have a lock in it. I don't know why. So it was always open. So I didn't leave much petrol in there because quite often people come out from the pub and Oh, there's Sherman's car, and, and those old, you didn't have to put a key in those, they just turned the ignition. And they would take the car and take it home because they were too drunk to walk. And the local police would ring up and say, Pete, we found your car halfway down the Walgett Road out of petrol. They'd give me a lift down there, we'd fill it up, and I'd bring it back again. They never crashed it, but it was the best $100 I ever spent. It was great PR around town. It was just, just really interesting. And then eventually, in the end, my brother and I decided when the Historical Society were opening up everything just down the road here, um, we would donate it because it is a bit of history of Lightning Ridge. So we donated the car and tourists still to this day take pictures of it. And even they see me down the street, they go, oh, you're Sherman, we've seen your car down the road. It's very famous. Then when dad passed away in 2002, we had a ceremony on the veranda down there and we sprinkled half his ashes in the garden bed right near the Holden. So Dad and the car are back to you. The other half we took out to the beautiful three mile, the big open cut, and we put him down the mine from the top. So Dad's back in Opal country. But in our garden, across from this car, are the ashes of two of the former owners of this car. So they've got their eye on it. They know it's worth money, but it's nothing we're ever gonna sell. It belongs to our community, as does Sherman Opals. We're glad we had them and still have them. Watch how Holden performs as a GMH test driver subjects Holden to road holding and steering tests far beyond the demand of everyday use. But going back to the old days, Dad was a stickler for Holdens because he had to go from Sydney to uh, Coobapedi, Andamooka, sometimes Lightning, which was most of the distance to Coobapedi, Andamooka. And the roads were really bad then. And you're out in the middle of nowhere he was stuck out there, there were no mobile phones or anything. And he said, that always, anything went wrong with the Holden, there was always something in a paddock somewhere that could fix it. So every year, Dad had a brand new Holden every year. And then we were offered the Holden here with the house. The 57 FC was a, an absolutely fabulous car, had to have it. 
never broke down. We took it everywhere. We took it out to the mines. We took it up to the three mile road. Crazy. Nothing ever went wrong. And then we were asked uh, to join the variety club rallies in the 90s. So Holden HR had to be no later than 66. So we got a, a 66, put roll bars in it, everything. Again, nothing ever went wrong. If anything ever went wrong, oh mate, there's no one in the paddock over there. <laughs> I'll go and get the part for you. And that actually happened a couple of times. The bloke just said, buy me a case of beer, go down the road, come back, it'll be fixed. Then we were an EJ and then we, we rallied in the EJ and um, my partner on that rally hit a bit of a pothole in the water and we rolled it over and over and over and hit the tree, bounced back, came out and he said, are you fine? I said, fine, because we had like racing suits and harnesses on. And we're going down the road pretty well. I said, how's the filly? He says, great. And the, the Black Magic, who were the uh, crew who were filming everything for the Variety Club, said, uh, car 305, car 305, I think you should slow down. Your, your wheel looks a bit funny. So uh, Tim says, look, um, have a look. So I've taken the harness off, I've opened the door, and I've hung out upside down, and the wheel's going like this. And they're saying, showman, slow down. Car 305, slow down. So we did. We'd limped into town, and apparently when we'd rolled over, we'd actually bent the stub axle on the end and the wheel was going, so possibly it was just going to fall off because he was still doing like 60, 80 k's an hour. We would end up in the scrub for the second time. And that was when the, the guy said, oh, you need a new stub axle, mate. Uh, yeah, buy me a slab, come back in an hour and it'd be done. And it was. New stub axle, wheel back on and, um, you yeah, know, put a new, new tyre on. Bob's your uncle. And we continued on the rally. So Holden's for us have been... I guess that's, it's Australia. Holden is Australia. You know, we like football, meat pies, kangaroos, and Holden cars used to be the, the big slogan. It's so sad that, that they're gone. Holden was an Australian institution for 164 years until its demise in 2020, with the last Australian made car of any kind being a Holden VF Commodore manufactured in 2017. If you would like to visit the Sherman's back Holden, you'll find it as part of the permanent display at the Lightning Ridge Historical Society's Museum in Marilla Street, Lightning Ridge. It's well worth a visit to check out a unique and quirky piece of Lightning Ridge history and a beautiful example of Australian motoring engineering and a part of a wonderful collection of heritage items. So my father, who has now passed away, was also an Opal buyer, not on the scale of Sherman's by at least an order of magnitude, but an Opal buyer nonetheless. I asked Peter about my dad's advertising strategy. Bit of a personal question. Were you aware of the rivalry between my father and you with the cars? <laughs> I'm going to guess the answer is no. No. Uh, was I aware of the rivalry with the cars? Which cars? With the Holden cars. No. Because you had the, the FC, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. You had the FC, FC with the wings. With the wings. Yeah. Wings and the... the, uh, the 1950 style tail lights and the yep, works. Yep. Well, Dad had to go out and get an FJ because he felt it was a better car and he slapped his buying signs all over it and parked it in the street when you weren't here. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that absolutely no, happened. Absolutely happened. That's yeah. interesting. And that was entirely motivated by flogging your idea. Great. Well, he should have held on the back of his car, Sherman's not back, which means he would have got the business. He, he wasn't that clever. <laughs> <laughs> This video was made with the help of the Lightning Ridge Historical Society with special thanks to Barbara and special thanks to P. Sherman of 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing to Curiosity Mine on YouTube and maybe considering becoming a supporter on Patreon and following along on social media too. And thank you for watching.